there's just one. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2020 MBBS Declaration Ceremony. Please be upstanding as we welcome the academic procession into the hall. Thank you. So, welcome. Um, I'm Sherry Galletley and I was the Interim Dean of Med the Adelaide Medical School in 2020, so I have the honour of being your MC for this afternoon. Now, an obvious question is, we've just done all this, why are we doing it over again? And there is a good answer to that, which is that normally the declaration ceremony takes place immediately after the end of the academic year. So all of the students finish up, they're all excited, and we have that window of opportunity before they go all go overseas or off to do other interesting things. And we have our own specific declaration ceremony where we give out our prizes and we say the declaration. And it's really a lovely occasion. Now, because of COVID, of course, that had to be deferred last year. We tried very hard to have a declaration ceremony and we had it all organised and then there was the three-day lockdown which landed right on the declaration ceremony. So it was put off and then we ended up um, combining it on the same day as the graduation. 
So that's why we have ended up having both the graduation and then the declaration ceremony following on from one another. But this, this ceremony allows us to do the things that are very special to our medical program. So I'd like to welcome Professors Ben Kyle, Corinna van den Heuvel, Lucy Walters, Dr. Martin Bruining, Professor Ian Simons and Associate Professor Joe Thomas, who were particularly important to this year group, our guest speaker, Professor Villas Marshall, our other very honored guests, along with staff, parents and friends, and also um, parents and friends overseas, because this is also being um, uh, recorded and sent on Zoom and most of all, our graduating students. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the Ghana people past and present, who as you know are the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains, and thus of the land on which the University Adelaide campuses are built. We acknowledge the Ghana people's ongoing spiritual connection with this land. So it was quite interesting hearing Jade's talk earlier, because she and I had obviously had pretty much the same thoughts about last year because um, I also reflected on the start of 2020 when everything was nicely planned out, everyone had their overseas electives, you know, it was all good to go. And then came COVID-19. There was massive disruption to our medical program as SA Health prepared for the pandemic. The students were understandably very anxious about their future. Students really wondered, would they actually graduate at all? Would it be possible to finish the year and become an intern? The Year 6 program had to be totally reorganised with new placements, teaching and assessments. Fortunately, our students were able to see the broader picture and they adapted to the very rapidly changing circumstances. Our Medical Staff Society representatives, Jade Pisaniello, TM Ahmed and Scott Chandrasiri did an amazing job. We worked together to keep the program on track as best we could and make sure that every final year student um, received adequate training to progress to an intern role. And interestingly, one of the clinicians said to me, you know, the interns this year seem to be a cut above. Um, so that was good. <laughs> um, so the skills you gained in 2020 um, will certainly help you in your future medical careers. You'll be able to respond quickly and sensibly to crises. You'll know how to prioritise and get on with the important tasks. You'll be flexible and adaptable and resilient. So the next time you find yourself in a health system facing massive unexpected disruption, and that will happen, um, you'll be able to manage the situation, care for your patients, and remember to look after yourselves. COVID-19 has shown how essential doctors, including public health, epidemiology, and health services management, are to our society. You will always know that your chosen career matters. You belong to a profession with a strong set of values. You will work hard, but you will have flexibility and choices and the privilege of helping patients and communities in their most desperate times. If anyone can deal with all of this and keep on smiling, then that's the class of 2020. So well done, congratulations, and all the best for your future. So our invited speaker today, Professor Villas Marshall, is a leading advocate for patient safety and quality health care. He's a graduate of the Adelaide Medical School. He completed his surgical training and fellowship in Adelaide, then held faculty, faculty appointments in London before returning to Adelaide. He's held numerous senior positions, including chair of the Flinders Medical Centre Department of Urology, clinical director of surgical specialties at the Royal Adelaide Hospital, and clinical professor of surgery at the University of Adelaide. He was awarded a Companion of the Order of Australia in 2006 for services to medicine, particularly urology, research into kidney disease, the development of improved healthcare services in the Defence Forces, and to the community through distinguished contributions to the development of pre-hospital first aid care provided by St John's Ambulance. Professor Marshall is Chair of the Board of the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare. So thank you, Professor Marshall. Well, this evening, first of all, I would like to con congratulate all of the new graduates. You're graduating from the Adelaide University School of Medicine 
which has a long tradition of service and excellence. And hopefully what you have learnt here, you will carry with you into the future. Because I can recall my time at the Adelaide University, it was very different from what it was in the last few years. When you look at what you've been doing, it's really been a long time coming for you to get to this point. You would have had 12 years of schooling, the need to get outstanding matriculation scores, and then six years of undergraduate studies. So in essence, for nearly two decades, you've been working towards this outcome. Possibly you don't believe it was that long. Some of you might think it never was going to happen. But then turn back, unfortunately, to January 2020. It was the last year in this long process. However, for you, and indeed for most of the world, it became a year from hell. A year we would like to forget, but never will. However, the university and the student body showed incredible ingenuity, flexibility and composure. And you have completed your undergraduate requirements and now are working in the health system. Indeed, the undergraduate program may never be the same with a much greater focus on online learning. And I believe these strategies are likely to be the norm with online learning being a significant component of postgraduate education in the future. Unfortunately, it had been necessary to minimize direct contact with patients during this time. However, human face-to-face -face interactions will still be a key feature of healthcare delivery. And while it has been necessary to limit face-to-face -face interactions during the pandemic, face-to-face -face interactions with patients and their families, I believe will remain the gold standard for the care in the foreseeable future. So in spite of the pandemic, pandemic you are now interns. You are part of the future of medicine, whether it be in South Australia, Australia, or for that matter, the world. We are fortunate that an Australian medical degree is highly regarded internationally. And this enables you, if you wish, to obtain training and work overseas without great difficulty. In most cases, this is a relatively straightforward year and when you and will become a PGY or as more commonly known, an intern. If you look at the definition of the word intern, it states to restrict or confine within prescribed areas. For example, prisoners of war, possibly you felt a bit like a prisoner of war during the past six months or so, or enemy aliens, or in the case of new medical graduates confined to living in teaching hospitals. However, this is no longer required, but nevertheless, even with so-called safe hours, you will find the for intern year a very taxing year. It will be something, I think, quite different than what you've really experienced while you were a student, and something which you will remember, I think, for the rest of your career. However, it's the beginning of your transition from student to independent medical practitioner and the direct responsibility for a person's care. Each year after your internship, the level of that responsibility will increase. During the intern year, the next challenge will be what professional stream will you follow? When faced by this challenge, I had a relatively easy task, as in the 1960s, there were no more than a dozen options. Now there are some 77 specialties recognised by the Medical Board of Australia. In the case of the United States, over 120 and continue to grow. Probably the best advice I had came from Professor Rowley, the Foundation Professor of Microbiology and Immunology at the Adelaide Medical School. It was quite simple. Ensure what every postgraduate path you choose, choose it in an area that you thoroughly enjoy. I think this was very important advice, thoroughly enjoy it, because when you think about it, whatever you choose, 
you're really going to be almost stuck with that for the next 40 or 50 years. So make sure that it's something you enjoy because I don't think any of you would want to be doing something you didn't enjoy for another 50 years. Certainly I chose surgery and I've never regretted that choice. Medicine is constantly evolving and new information is expanding at an incredible rate. It is estimated that the doubling time for medical knowledge in 1950 was 50 years. In 1980, it had been shortened to seven years. In 2010, to 3.5 years. And in 2020, to 0.2 years, or 73 days. So in fact, during the six years of your course, there has been three doublings of medical knowledge. I hope you are able to manage to deal with those doublings. It is now estimated that there are now 30,000 30, medical journals and two million articles published each year. This presents huge challenges for the future to determine how this flood of new information can be assimilated into current practice and of course into medical education. So a major challenge for all health practitioners is how to sift the wheat from the chaff or will medicine be taken over by artificial intelligence, something all medical practitioners will need to consider in the future? However, that said, the rapid increase in knowledge from 1950 rapidly transformed the face of medicine. There are remarkable developments with the development of CAT scans, MRI, ultrasound, a wide range of antibiotics, establishment of intensive care units and organ transplantation, effective chemotherapy, and an, even an ambulance that's fitted with a CAT scanner so that a patient with a stroke can have the obstruction cleared on the way to hospital. And I suppose if you were very optimistic, step out of the ambulance and return home, and that may overcome some of the overcrowding in the emergency departments. It seemed to be a golden age, not paralleled at any time in history, and as a consequence, better outcomes would automatically follow. However, this euphoria was tempered by the Institute of Medicine report in 1999 to err as human. The, this report estimated that one million people were injured and 98,000 died as a result of medical error in the United States. This was followed by an even more disturbing study with premature deaths to exceed 400,000. However, apart from the medical profession, it appeared that these findings were buried within the medical literature. Even the title of the publication, To Err, in, err is Human, seemed to trivialize the findings. However, now one such error may make front page news and the profession has become much more accountable for poor outcomes. One strong recommendation that was made was to develop a culture of safety in the healthcare industry. But this has been no easy task and there are still significant challenges. I am sure most of you will be aware of the issues which have led to the Royal Commission into aged care system. This has exposed serious shortcomings in the care of patients in aged care facilities. Unfortunately, bullying and sexual harassment has been increasingly recognised as an issue in health care and international reports indicating 59% of medical trainees experience bullying and 33% sexual harassment. This is totally unacceptable and needs to be brought into the open open if it's occurring. Recent events in the Australian Parliament have reinforced the need to ensure that these issues are not swept under the carpet. They must be dealt with and all of you must feel that you have both the responsibility and the right to bring it to the attention of your supervisors. Let me now turn to another threat to safety and quality, antimicrobial resistance. The development of a wide range of antibiotics, perhaps not surprisingly, led to complacency as far as infection control was concerned. 
there always that a new antibiotic would come along and it would deal with the resistant organisms. So what has led to this situation? Well, overprescribing, prolonged usage and widespread usage in animal husbandry. This has required multiple responses and probably the most valuable has been hand hygiene. This, of course, has been a key component in the management of the pandemic. Simple, very effective, yet remarkably difficult to implement. Very few institutions have achieved 100% compliance, even when staff knew they were being watched. I always remember when I was involved in one of these surveys and had a student with me. During the survey, I asked if he noticed the consultant had not undertaken hand hygiene, would he inform the consultant? He looked at me as if I'd lost my senses. I'd put the same question to you, the new graduates. If you saw one of the consultants had not washed their hands, would you say, excuse me, you haven't washed your hands? I won't ask you to give me a show of hands. So you might, and so this is something that has been really a problem for a considerable period of time in the sense that the mining and the airline industry is superior to medicine as staff are encouraged to immediately report anything that compromised safety. You might argue in the airline industry in particular, there would be more personal interest as not informing the pilot of a fault that could then cause the aircraft to crash. This would have disastrous consequences for you as well as everyone else on the plane. However, if the pandemic has done nothing else, it has demonstrated poor hand hygiene can be just as dangerous for us as for our patients. While it is well recognised that antibiotics have no value in influenza or urinary tract infections, they're still previved in more than 50% of patients presenting with these symptoms. Patients are often convinced that this is the right course of action and it's very difficult to convince them otherwise. This is where the medical profession needs to engage with government to develop public education programs to convince the community of the need for, in this case, caution in the prescribing of antibiotics. Perhaps one of the greatest challenges that you will face is an ageing population. 13% of the population is currently over 65, but you're, during your career, the number over 65 will double. However, currently 11 million Australians or 50% of the population already has one chronic disease. While 87% of those over 65 have one in chronic disease, some 40% of those over 45 also have one chronic disease. The most common being cardiovascular disease and mental health disease. Either changes in lifestyle or better treatment or both will be necessary to manage this demand. You have met the challenge of COVID. You will now have to meet the challenge of an aging population. So this is the end of one phase of your life and the beginning of your career as a medical practitioner. Medicine has never stood still. At times the pace of change was slow, but the pace of change has never been greater than it is today. So it seems you will always be learning, managing change, and hopefully caring, as I would su suggest the hallmarks of a good doctor, a sound contemporary knowledge, and perhaps most of all, compassion. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now commence the first section of our awards, which will be presented by Professor Marshall. Okay, so first we have the Ian Furler Prize in Obstetrics and Gynaecology. This is awarded in year six to the student who achieved the best overall mark in a structured viva examination in year five. The recipient is Mary Premnath. Come up and get your prize and get your photo taken. Just hit 
Sorry, we're not quite as well rehearsed as we might be. <laughs> okay, the Ruth Heeway Memorial Prize and Medal. This is awarded to the student who achieves the highest marks in the year six and the year five examination in human reproductive health from the long case survivor and the end of term OSCE. Recipient is Esther Jones. The Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology Women's Health Award. This award is in recognition of an outstanding obstetrics and gynaecology student in year five. And this year there are two recipients, Janine Vu, Janine Vu and Thunveer Mocha. Right, the H.K. Fry Pro Memorial Prize in Psychological Medicine. This is awarded to the Year 6 student who gives the best presentation on a psychiatric topic undertaken as a component of the Year 6 Psychiatry Attachment. The recipient is Sylvia Gralak for our survey on mental well-being during COVID-19. Okay, and there are also two honourable mentions there. John Snow for the Fourth Industrial Revolution and Mental Health, and Fraser Betley for Psychedelics, the Next Frontier in the Management of Depression and Anxiety. So well done. <laughs> Next, we have the Sir Trent Champion de Crepney Memorial Prize. This is awarded in year six to the student who obtained the highest marks in the year five end of year clinical examination. This goes to Anton Alvaro. And uh, Anton, Anton, if you'd like to come straight back up, you also got the Frank S. Hone Memorial Prize, which was awarded to the candidate who in passing the year five end of year examination got the highest integrated total mark in that examination. So you also achieved that. <laughs> okay, the Ch Keith Sheridan Prize is awarded in year six to the student who has obtained the highest overall performance in the year five clinical attachments and the year five end of year examination. And the recipient is John Dongas. <laughs> now John, just staying put. <laughs> You also have the Everard Prize, which is awarded to the final year student, and this is quite a complicated algorithm. You finished as one of the top four students in year three, subsequently over years four, five, and six, obtained the highest overall performance in the year four and five examinations, and in the year five, four, five, and six clinical attachments. So basically this award is for outstanding effort in the last four years of the program. Well done.
Okay. I'd like to thank Professor Marshall for presenting these awards and congratulate the recipients on their hard work and achievements. Thank you. So I'd now like to invite Dr. Kai En Ha, President of the Australian Chinese Medical Association of South Australia, to present the Australian Chinese Medical Association Prize. This is awarded to the student with the best overall result in year six, and the recipient is Bianca Meltzner. I'd now like to invite Victoria Langton, past winner of the Patron's Plate, to award this year's recipient of the Patron's Plate, which is normally presented at the Med Gala Ball, but because we had COVID, we didn't have a Med Gala Ball, so we're doing it here. Um, this, the Patron's Plate is awarded to a final year medical student and voted on by the general student body, and the recipient is Jade Pisaniello. I'd now like to invite the president of the Adelaide Medical Student Society, who coincidentally is Jade, to remain on stage and present the Daniel Mannix Prize, normally presented at the Med Gala Ball, as well as the student awards to staff. Um, so as Prof Gallatly said, my name is Jade Pisanello and I was fortunate enough to be the president of the Adelaide Medical Student Society in 2020. Um, so now I would like to talk about the Daniel Mannix O'Brien Award. So this is awarded to a sixth year student and recognises three aspects of students' character, service to peers in the community, loyalty and compassion to friends, and leadership and personal development. In 2020, this was awarded to Daniel Sansom. So now we'll move on to the student awards to staff. So throughout their time at the Adelaide Medical School, students are fortunate to receive invaluable teaching from clinicians, registrars, junior doctors, and SA Health staff, often out of the generosity of their own time and without remuneration. The Adelaide Medical Student Society Teaching Awards acknowledge the generous contributions of these teachers and mentors to the learning and growth of students throughout the medical program. Four awards are presented annually on recommendations from student feedback for contributions to preclinical, clinical and rural teaching, with the final award specifically for registrars who teach into various levels of the program. The Richard Pello Prize for preclinical teaching, years one to three, is awarded to Dr Andrea Dillon. Now we just have three more awards and unfortunately the recipients aren't present but we'll still announce it. So the Mark Bonham Prize for Clinical Teaching of years four to six, the recipient is Dr Nicole Edge. The Registrar Teaching Award is awarded to Dr Matthew Watson. And the Rural Teaching Award is awarded to Dr. Mark Harris. Thank you so much, Jade. 
and they've had a request from the photographer, when you come up, could you try and stand, I think it's the red crosses you want, isn't it? Yeah, one person on each red cross. Okay. Um, so I'd now like to welcome Sashini Pereira, who is representing the Adelaide Medical Students Foundation to present the Intern Teaching Awards. The Intern Teaching Awards recognise the outstanding efforts of interns to educate and mentor Adelaide medical students. Awards are presented for each major teaching site, the Royal Adelaide Hospital, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, the Lyle McEwen and Modbury Hospitals, after nominations by students, selection by the Medical Education Committee at each site, and approved by the Adelaide Medical Students Foundation Board of Directors. The Student Teaching Award goes to Dr. Brandon Stratton. The Intern Teaching Award for the Royal Adelaide Hospital goes to Dr Victoria Langton. The Intern Teaching Award for the Queen Elizabeth Hospital goes to Dr Thomas Gransbury. And the Intern Teaching Award for the Lyle McEwen Hospital goes to Dr Cutie Canampaza. Thank you. Thank you. The next award was to be presented by Dr Zachariah Baig, but he's not actually here, um, Chair of the Royal Australian um, College of General Practitioners. This is the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners Prize. Applications are ranked with a weighting of 50% based on academic merit and 50% on their GP supervisor report, which assesses the student's commitment to general practice, employability, communication, knowledge and skills. And the recipient? is Anton Alvara. <laughs> Dr. Baig was to bring the prize with him. <laughs> so we will get it off him. <laughs> OK. Um, the next award is presented by Mr. Peter Jenkin, who's a nurse practitioner at, at uh, Rest Haven. This is the Rest Haven Palliative Medicine Medal and Prize. It's awarded to a final year student who has demonstrated excellence in palliative medicine during their medical course. This year there are two recept recipients, Adina LaForgia and Portia Joyce Tubb. Thank you. Our next award is the Australian and New Zealand Society for Geriatric Medicine South Australia Prize, which is being presented by Dr Aisha Mohammed, who's president of the Australian and New Zealand Society for Geriatric Medicine South Australia Division. This award goes to the student who in year five is recognised for their efforts in the geriatric attachment of the program. Recipient is Janine Vu.
I now invite Professor John Crompton to present the David Crompton Award. This award goes to a final year student who has submitted the best 3,000 word essay on any ophthalmology related topic of the student's choice. And the recipient is Carmelo Macri. I'd now like to call on Professor Lucy Walters, Director of the Rural School, to represent the Jonathan Newbury Rural Student Award. The successful recipient of this award is a well-rounded student who is actively engaged in their community as well as their profession. The recipient is Catherine Sharley. Thank you. I'd now like to invite Dr Chris Moy, who's President of the Australian Medical Association of South Australia and Vice President of the Australian Medical Association, to say a few words before presenting the AMA Prize. This will be his final official duty with us. He's been a strong supporter of the University of Adelaide during his time in this position. And we acknowledge his support and thank him very much for being here tonight. Oh, shall I tell you what the medal's for? Um, the AMA medal is awarded to a final year student who is judged to be the best student on the combined criteria of academic performance, contribution to the medical school, including representing the interests of students, and contribution to the health of the community. So perhaps if you'd like to speak, and then we'll announce. Thank you, Professor Gillespie. Um, look, really, it is a great honour to be here. Um, every, um, I've got to say, it was the thing that I was told was that this was the most joyous event that you go to actually doing this job, so it has been. Um, before the last ceremony, we had a bit of a giggle before the event, some of you may remember, because I have in my brief actually says, uh, give an inspiring speech, four minutes, that was the last time. And uh, I assume that due to COVID restrictions uh, and risk of aerosol spread due to excess generation of hot air, I've been given two minutes this time. So first up, I'm an Adelaide graduate, so yay Adelaide, okay? Don't tell the Flinders people that I say this. Um, look, I've really had a great time actually working with uh, you as a group um, and get to, got, gotten to know you and hopefully support you along the way. Uh, I really don't want to bore you with superficial words. Um, um, I hope you remember some of the things I have said to you along the way. Um, I will just mention the great philosopher uh, uh, Ferris Bueller from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and that is, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. And that's something I now really am uh, taking to note, given the fact I'm at the end of my presidency. Um, I also want to say that, you know, I hope that you remember that some of, you know, the work of the AMA in supporting you and hope that you've learnt some of the things about the values which are really important about the profession that you've actually entered. It's a profession. The profession of medicine has values which I think are really a lot of the reason why you wanted to be a part of it in the first place. And those things include, you know, obviously the care of patients, but also support of colleagues, the ethics, being prepared to stand up for things that matter, but also leadership. But also having the resolve to hang on to the ideals that you went into this with, you know, when you started your medical school, and that you're just about to express in the declaration that you're about to undertake. But resolve is not fleeting, it's enduring, and that's something to keep in mind. It's not something just to pass over, really take to heart what you're about to, to say in the declaration. Because I guarantee you that it will reflect on the care that you'll give to your patients on a daily basis, but also give you greater personal satisfaction through towards the end of your careers. And that brings me to the AMA essay medal. 
Um, the medal is one of two awarded this year to graduating medical students, one here tonight and another which we um, presented uh, late last year to the Flinders Medical School. The AMA SA Student Medal acknowledges both academic excellence but also contributions to the School of Medicine through representing the interests of students and involvement with student life. This year's winner of the University of Adelaide Student Medal is someone I have had the absolute pleasure of coming to know last year, even though it was in extremely stressful circumstances, and I think this person will remember that. But through pressure comes diamonds. This individual obviously did well, but more importantly showed outstanding commitment to fellow students by way of calm leadership when the chips were down, while also gaining the respect of faculty staff. Most importantly, they have embodied the values during these last few years which the AMA stands for and, I wish, and, I wish, and which you will voice in your declaration. I do not think that there will be anyone in this room who will be surprised that the winner of the AMA medal is Jade Pizzinello. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to all of our presenters and congratulations to our students. Associate Professor Scott Clark will now come forward for the declaration ceremony. Associate Professor Clark was the year four to six coordinator during 2020, so uh, he knows this class well. Um, could students please bring your declaration certificates with you as we announce our graduates? I present to you uh, graduates from the Adelaide Medical School to the degrees of uh, Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. Haydar Hadri bin Abdu Wahabi. <laughs> Matish Anurathe uh, Abaratne. Lucinda Adams. <laughs> Habib Ahmad. <laughs> Anton Alvaro. Adon Toro Nicholas Asahina. <laughs> Larissa Win Nak Van Al. <laughs> Evelyn Axelby. Andrew Baker. <laughs> Tristan Bampton. <laughs> Krishna Bailey. Amaya uh, Barnan Shali. <laughs> Deba Bumal Gujari. <laughs> Chloe Borges. Chelsea Burford. <laughs> Dr. 
Jennifer Chataway. Hoi Min Chu. Braden Claridge. Georgina Collins. Malagi Doni uh, Visaka Desniake. John Dongus. Demetria Dionysia Dunas. Sega Ellen Govan. Yu Hung Fong. Sarah Frost. Jessica Garland. Sean Gershwitz. Ziwa Go. Sylvia Gralick. <laughs> Nayamali Ganarathna. <laughs> Emily Hammond. Sarah Harris. <laughs> Lucienne Heath. <laughs> Nemea Huagi. <laughs> Lucy Hayworth. Rebecca Hogan. <laughs> Wee J. Ho. Florence Holland. Benjamin Peter Jixing Hotz. Hotz. <laughs> Isabella Huang. <laughs> Caden Huang. Jennifer Hughes. <laughs> Jessica Huin. <laughs> Esther Jones. Kate Joyce.
Portia Joyce Tubb. James Tuan Q. Saravi Kirinatawat. Kevin Kaur. George Katuzis. Adina LaForgia. Catherine Lee. Ray Wan Lee. Charling Lim. Xing Lun Lim. Yi Chu Lim. Josh Benjamin Lyons. Fergus Lynch. James McAdam. Camillo Macri. Rose Massolino. Colette Massey Westrop. <laughs> Brendan McInerney. <laughs> Bianca Melzer. <laughs> Bonnie Miller. Jessica Mitchell. <laughs> Thanvir Singh Mocker. <laughs> Catalina Moraga Masson. Lee Sutton. <laughs> to he in the wind. <laughs> Does he know? Riley Oven. <laughs> Samuel Pears. <laughs> Jade Cianello. Xiang Yen Po. <laughs> Ra
Roberta Potomanios. Mary Premrath. Charlotte Proudman. Katara Rana. Bhuvanesh Ravichandran. Tanea Renshaw. <laughs> Joanna Richards. Madeline Rock. Bridget Rodder. Emma Rose. Jake Rowe. Jack Rumbelow. Daniel Sansom. Hugh Shevardin. Eleanor Schofield. Julia Scott. And Dylan Simon. Imogen Sellers. Snezana Simak. Sharana Shantram. <laughs> Catherine Charlie. <laughs> Gafarman Singh. Georgia Smithson Thomas. John Snow. Felicia Stanza. Peter Stapleton. <laughs> Natasha Stoles. <laughs> Brandon Stretton. <laughs> Ching Si Tan. Si Ying Adele Tung. (Applause) 
Sally Terrett. V Tran. Sarah Truen. Timothy Truen. Ashley Twigger. Eloise Vaughan. Janine Quinn Nuvu. Mary Wang. Isabella Jane Watts. Wirakoti Moody Salan Judani Vasala Wirakoti. George Waite Wells. Desis Bandara Weiwegama. Laura White. <laughs> Caleb Weijasina. <laughs> Millie Williams. Alexander Wong. Daniel Zweck. Sarah Jones. Pianet with Jantham. And David Nguyen. This concludes the graduates from the Adelaide Medical School for this ceremony. Thank you, Scott, and congratulations to all our graduates. I now invite Bianca Meltzner, the winner of the Australian Chinese Medical Association Prize, back to the stage to lead the graduates in the reading of the declaration. Thank you, Professor Gillatly. Um, so now I invite the class of 2020 to join me in reciting the Declaration of Geneva. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The, wealth, the health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me, even after the patient has died. 
I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honour and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of healthcare. I will attend to my own health, well-being and abilities in order to provide care to the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honour. Thank you. Could all of the graduate please remain seated and I'd invite everyone else here today to please stand and once again join me in congratulating them on their achievements. Please be seated. Now I'm going to ask the graduates to stand and acknowledge the support crew, the teachers, the parents and everybody else that's helped them get this far. Thank you. That concludes our ceremony. Now, if everybody could please stand um, for the academic procession. Thank you.
are you doing? 